Support Name Explain on Patreon for $1 a month to enjoy ad-free videos, exclusive content, your name at the end of each video, as well as the chance to have your idea for a Name Explain video made into reality. Go to patreon.com forward slash name explain or click the link down below. Orphan as a noun has its ultimate origins in the Greek word of orphos, meaning bereft, which makes sense as orphans are traditionally those who are bereft of parents. This Greek word of orphos was then adapted into the other Greek word of orphanos, meaning without parents. This seems to have been an adjective, however, but the Romans in their Latin would turn it into the noun of orphanus, where it specifically meant parentless child. And from here it became the French orpheline, the Italian orphana, and of course in English it became orphan. So it seems that orphan is one of the words of the Germanic English language that was from French slash Latin influence, as other Germanic words for orphan are nothing like this, like the German vars and the Dutch vis. Suffice to say, from this etymology alone and its roots in meaning bereft, orphan is seen as a word with a lot of negative connotations. And without getting too down in the dumps about it, my love and heart goes out to anyone watching this video who has become an orphan at any age. There are many world-renowned people on this planet who were orphans, like the American founding father Alexander Hamilton. Hollywood star Marilyn Monroe, and civil rights activist Malcolm X, to name a few. And of course, orphans have played a huge role in popular culture, with many famous characters being orphans and even defined by that fact. Take the likes of Spider-Man, Batman, Oliver Twist, and of course, Little Orphan Annie. There are many well-known orphans out there. Yet the orphans we are looking into today are not people who change the world, starred in musicals, or even superheroes, but instead a set of specific words. It turns out that words like people can become orphans too. These orphaned words are called orphaned negatives, also known as unpaired words. It's highly likely you've used an orphan negative at some point in your life, maybe even recently, especially if you speak English. Yeah, this video is primarily focused on English, as I'm not all that sure orphan negatives exist in other languages. I couldn't find any info out there on French or Swahili or any other languages versions of them, but if I'm wrong, please let me know. So, what exactly is an orphan negative word then? Well, to understand them, we kind of need to understand what a prefix and a suffix is. These are specific kinds of morphemes, with a morpheme being the smallest unit of language with meaning, more on them later, that are added to the start or end of an already established word. Prefixes go at the start and suffixes go at the end. Prefixes and suffixes are used to change the meaning of a word, often to mean the opposite of the initial word, or they can even change the class of a word. Take the popular prefix of un. This is usually applied to words to mean the opposite of the initial word, like when we add un to happy we get unhappy, which means we are not happy. Likewise, the popular suffix of ing can be added to the noun slash verb of run to make it into the adjective of running. And yes, running can also be a noun too, but you get the point. The key thing we need to know, however, when it comes to prefixes and suffixes is that when they aren't featured in a word, the word still makes sense. Like happy and run are words unto themselves without the un prefix or ing suffix, and everyone knows what these words mean. That isn't the case with orphan negatives, however. This is because orphan negatives are words that feature morphemes at the start of them that are widely seen and used as prefixes and suffixes. But when we take them away from these so-called orphan negatives, we are left with a word that has no meaning or real usage, or we use a completely different word in place of this orphan negative without its affix, which is the collected term for a prefix and a suffix. It would probably make a lot more sense if I just gave you an example of an orphan negative. Hopefully by now I've done enough preamble to get this video over 10 minutes and keep YouTube happy. My favourite orphan negative has to be the word of disgruntled. This is an adjective and means to be uncomfortable, angry, and just a bit moody all around. At the start of this word is the sound of this, which is a commonly used prefix in English and usually denotes negativity or a lack of something. Like when we add it to the front of the word pleasure and get the word displeasure, it means we are without pleasure. So if we take the dis prefix from disgruntled, we are left with the word of gruntled. In theory, you would believe that just gruntled would mean you are happy, in a good place, and just all around feeling great vibes. While that makes logical sense, in reality, this isn't the case at all, simply because gruntled unto itself isn't a word that existed in the English language. At least it really doesn't exist all that much anymore in language. More on that later too. This makes disgruntled a great example of an orphan negative. It's a word pretty much everyone understands and knows how to use, but take away the dis from the start of it, and suddenly we have this very strange word of gruntled. Put plainly, Orphan negatives are words that should seemingly have another word relating to them, but simply don't. 
This gruntled is far from the only example of an orphan negative. You can find whole lists of them online, and I'm sure many are coming to mind just as you think about the concept. Other ones I enjoy are words like nonchalant. To do something nonchalantly means to do it with ease and not make a big fuss about it. Non as a prefix simply means not, so we can interpret this word as meaning not chalant, which implies that chalant is a word unto itself. Chalant could mean that you do something in a very messy manner, being very obvious in the actions you are taking. This would make sense but chalant simply isn't a word either. Similar to nonchalant is innocuous, which means something is very inoffensive or non-hostile. Does this mean that just innocuous means something is loud and annoying and causes rage? Well, no it doesn't. At least no one uses it in that sense on a regular basis. Even a word like irritate fits the bill as an orphan negative. To be irritated means to be annoyed, and yet to be just rotated doesn't mean to be calm and happy. There's even a case of an orphan negative word having two different prefixes, overwhelmed and underwhelmed. To be overwhelmed means what you've just experienced has stressed you out and made you feel panicked, and to be underwhelmed means what you've just experienced has bored you, leaving wanting more. But what if you were just whelmed. I guess this would mean what you've just experienced has left you feeling exactly how you thought it would. I mean it doesn't because no one ever just uses the word of whelmed. Maybe this video will leave you feeling completely whelmed. That's always my intention with them, not to, not to overexcite or bore, just something to watch while you're on the toilet or something. There are some cases with orphan negatives that when we do take away that affix, we are left with something that is an actual word that people will understand, but not use it in the same way it's used with an orphan negative. Take a word like off-putting. This means that something has a quality to it which has made you dislike it. If we remove the off prefix, we are left with the word of putting. And while putting is a word unto itself, as in I'm putting my toys away, it doesn't mean the opposite of off-putting or anything relating to that word. Conversely, on-putting isn't the opposite of off-putting either. Like off-putting, we also have untoward, meaning something was unexpected or inappropriate. We can just use toward as a word, but it doesn't mean the inverse of untoward. It simply means we can go in the direction of something, like go towards that door in example. As mentioned, there are so many orphan negatives out there, and they live in this sad spot where they seem like they should have another word to go with them, but unfortunately, don't. So, why is this the case? Well, remember, these are orphaned words, and the whole thing about the term of orphan is it means that something did once have a relative, but they are now long gone. And this is the case with many orphan negatives. Take uncoofed meaning lacking in manners. Just coof, meaning you have manners, was once a word. Well, kind of. In Old English, there was the word of kunan, meaning well-known, and it was then adapted into uncouth, but never just coof, seemingly. Likewise, norcus was a Latin word meaning hurtful. Then it got the in prefix added to it and became inocus in Latin. While that got adapted into innocuous in English, just innocuous never did. The example we started this all with, however, comes from stranger origins. Gruntled was once a word, but it didn't mean to be happy, it meant to grunt. It was this that got the dis prefix added to it, so technically disgruntled means not to grunt. But I imagine the dis prefix was added to heighten the fact you're unhappy, as dis often means negative. It's very illogical I know and breaks the rules of language, but that's what's neat about them. One of the best things about orphan negatives however, is that people are trying to bring these words without their affixes into more common usage. Many writers and linguists have been trying to re-establish the words they came from and make them actual legitimate words, sometimes to success. For example, just gruntled, meaning to be pleased, satisfied and content, has an entry in the OED, with it first being used by P.G. Woodhouse, author of the Jeeves and Worcester books. Beloved British linguist Susie Dent has also written about orphan negatives and how we should bring back these words into popular usage. And another writer called Stephen Liddell spoke of them too, and wrote a whole passage using unorphan negatives, which begins with the line, it had been a rough day, so when I walked into the party, I was very chalant, despite my efforts to be gruntled and consulate. You can make out what the author is trying to say here pretty easily. Because we're familiar with orphan negatives, our brains fill in the blanks when they are unorphaned. There is a chance that one day these words won't be orphans anymore. But even if that does happen, there's actually another kind of orphaned word out there those being orphaned initialisms. This is when an initialism once had a meaning, but that meaning has been purposefully removed. They most commonly happen in the world of business. A great example is with the fast food chain of KFC. KFC, as I'm sure many of you will know, stood for Kentucky Fried Chicken, and you may have thought that it still does, but in the 90s this was changed and they're now just called KFC. 
with those letters standing for nothing. A personal favourite of mine has to be WWE. The pro wrestling company was once called WWF, but had to change their name to WWE for animal reasons. This stood for World Wrestling Entertainment, yet now it doesn't actually mean that, but it just means WWE. Other examples include MTV, IBM and DVD. There's also another kind of orphaned word element I want to mention too. They don't have orphan in their name, but they fit the bill. Those being cranberry morphemes. As mentioned earlier, a morpheme is the smallest element of a word with meaning. And a cranberry morpheme are morphemes that appear in one word with no wider meaning. Think of the twy in twilight, the cray in crayfish, and of course the cran in cranberry, which is where the name for these kinds of morphemes derive from. These morphemes don't really appear appear in other words and don't have too much meaning, unlike say the morpheme of black in blackberry, which is a word unto itself. Funnily enough, some argue that the cran in cranberry isn't actually a cranberry morpheme, as that word might come from crane, as in the birds, as they enjoy eating them. So maybe some of these morphemes won't have to stay in the orphanage for that much longer too. Name Explain depends on viewers like yourself supporting the channel financially on Patreon, so a huge thank you to everyone who does. Donating just $1 a month helps the channel amazingly and gets you bonuses including ad-free videos, exclusive content, the power to request ideas to be made into actual Name Explain videos, and your name at the end of the video with all these awesome people. Visit patreon.com forward slash Name Explain or click the link down below to find out how you too can support the channel. Thank you. Thanks for reaching the end of the video. Why not watch another and subscribe to keep up to date on all things Name Explain? You can find myself on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain to talk with myself and other name nerds. All that will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.